Good afternoon, everyone. Um, let's get started with our slides. So today we have 5,148 cases as of this morning. That number continues to rise. We now um, are seeing cases in 83 of our 88 counties. And unfortunately, you know, the death numbers are climbing in Ohio. We are at 193, um, approaching the 200 mark. And, and as the governor and lieutenant governor said, you know, Mr. Dawson and every single one of those numbers um, is a story unto themselves. And so, you know, we talk a lot about numbers here and I always feel strange saying them because they're people and they're people with stories. And um, we're gonna tell more of those stories in the days to come and our thoughts are, are, are with you on that. Um, next, next slide, Eva. So uh, we're still seeing a median age um, of illness at 54, our age range still uh, less than a year age to 101. We have now tested 53,000 folks. Hospitalizations, um, to date almost 1,500 hospitalizations and IC admissions at about 472 right now. And these weeks that you have created have given our hospitals and our healthcare system really time to structure and be ready. We still are experiencing, again, shortages of testing, plague us, and shortages of PPE, as the governor said. So the, the actions you're taking and keeping the pressure off our healthcare system are vital, <laughs> because otherwise um, they wouldn't be able to provide that care for emergencies like our, our heart attacks and our strokes and car accidents and births. So, the work you're doing uh, in staying at home has been saving lives, and let me show you a little more about that. So the good news, and I know there's a lot, a lot being said about modeling. Again, the weather prediction models that will continue to change and ebb and flow. Um, all the decisions we made, you know, were based on the reality of a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic and sort of what we are seeing both clinically and what we knew works to slow down a disease for which there is no cure yet, for which everyone in the entire world was susceptible. So these models, I wanna tell you more about them, but the most important punchline is this. Every single modeler, everyone who talks about it is saying that we must keep doing what we're doing. We must, you're succeeding. You're succeeding, but the second you ease back, we'll see ourselves in, 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 in an outbreak that, that will really overwhelm our healthcare system. I think um, even the most conservative numbers of making sure we're prepared for worst case scenarios to the folks who have said, you know, we're doing so well, you know, we might not run out of ventilators, which is our whole goal all along is to not run out of that precious equipment, not be forced into difficult decisions. They are saying, Dr. Murray at the Institute for Health Metrics is trying to say to you, don't stop doing what you're doing. That's what, what these models are showing. And, and, and I wanna talk about one piece of this because it's going to be important. We were the first in, one of the first in in Ohio with these aggressive, bold moves. We wanna be one of the first states out. But we're gonna need to follow the modeling to get there. We're gonna need to follow our testing results once we have them. And it's gonna be based on this, this, this sort of premise of modeling. So we've tried to break it down for you here. It's all based on susceptible people, it's called SIR modeling, susceptible, infected, and who's recovered. And this is really back to um, how infectious is this disease, how quickly does it double? We wanna see that doubling time get much, much, much longer. We've been seeing doubling times in the United States of three days to six days. We wanna get that out to 12 days and farther uh, before we can even begin to slow down that gas. But it's all based on how this spreads. Next slide. So this is us in Ohio. This is us before, and we know now that this disease was seeding and, and spreading even before you ever met me. But you know, this is the population of Ohio waiting for a new novel coronavirus to enter. And eventually we started being seeded. And this was early on 
um, even before we started making some of the moves, even before the Arnold Classic, um, we had travelers going back and forth. We took very aggressive measures to quarantine the people we know of, but we now know, and it's been publicized, that many, many people came back um, from places that were endemic with the virus and brought it back all over this country, and it was seeding in our country. And so those first cases landed, and then they were often, um, some were known, but many weren't, um, starting to spread the disease. And then, so one um, infected person does that Kevin Bacon degrees of infecting 2.5 to 3 people um, in their sphere of influence, and then those go, and that's where we get that logarithmic spread of the disease. That's what we didn't want. We didn't want to be Wuhan where you know, they just went straight up that curve. We wanted to slow down that spread. Keep going. So that goes more and more. So the people who are infected keep spreading. But somewhere in here, we start to get the blue dots. And those are so important. And that is going to be important for our recovery. These are the people who are now recovered. So we have our susceptible people, the orange, the people who are infected, red, spreading. But then eventually, we get those people who are recovered. And they um, are the people we're going to be detecting through our antibodies. They are going to be part of our recovery plan. They're also part of the people who can donate some of their plasma so that we can use antibodies as a form of treatment. So the blues growing is, is how, how we are going to eventually um, track this. Keep going. So before, in our earlier modeling, we knew all along that if you did nothing, we would have predicted 62,000 cases per day at the peak. And of course, we would have peaked long ago. Um, in Ohio, if we were predicting up to um, initial peak projection um, on one modeling was 98,000 cases per day. Uh, we, we had another model that six, said six to 8,000. Our latest projection is 1,600 cases per day. Still a lot of cases per day, still a load on our hospitals, but this is the effect you have done. And watch this. In Ohio, we took our, our prediction, and you have basically done this. Evo's doing our little. Governor, I don't know if you can see it, but you have squashed this and you have stretched it. Honestly, this is you. This is what you have done. This is how you have saved lives. But please know that that you know, our data, the, the reason the modeling takes a while is it took about two weeks to see the effects of the strict social distancing. And if we stopped today, if we all ran outside in two more weeks, we would have gone way back up again. So, so that's, that's the thing here. We've got to hold steady, hold the course. Next slide. So this is another way to look at it. And this is a little more of the story of what Ohio did. Um, we did early mitigation. Some people came in a little bit later. Um, and you see then that, that they're, they're worse off on the numbers at their peak. Later and later in mitigation, this would have been no mitigation. And we'll have this on our website because I'm sure it's very hard to see on your screen. But um, you know, we're very blessed to be in this category of the early mitigation. And we've got to stay there. Thank you, Evo. Next.